for taking the time away from your busy schedule. I know it's never easy as uh, working from home, right? Especially now where you have to work uh, with your family and it's difficult juggling time as, uh, to manage handling your work as well as spending time with the family as well. And for those who have children, I know they can be quite challenging for them to be home-based home learning as well. Okay, next slide. Okay, so who am I? I just do a quick little intro about myself. Uh, so who is Adrian, right? Of course, Adrian is, uh, is, is all of you, uh, similar. I'm a father, I'm a son-in-law, I'm a son, I'm a brother as well. So uh, this is a picture of me uh, in 2013 where we, I was fortunate enough to be in a, in a TV series called uh, Meet My Family, right? So I have a lot of people in my family, eight of us living in a little cozy five-room flat. So that's me as a, as a human, as an individual. And then uh, what else do I have? Okay, so my history was uh, I was in the military. So this is a picture of me. This is a picture of me right here at the bottom right corner uh, as, a, as a commanding officer of a, of a maintenance battalion. So I'm a guards officer by vocation, got downgraded along the way and, and, and they pushed me over to logistics. So I was managing about 700 people in a maintenance battalion. So that's my experience in the military. And in 2013, what I did was I decided to step out earlier from the military. And so now I'm more of a trainer, facilitator, as well as a coach. So that's what I'm doing now. So since 2013, for about seven years, I've been having a very enjoyable life. Challenging, no doubt. Uh, it made even more challenge due to COVID-19. But overall, I find that uh, it's very fulfilling when be able to help, uh, help organizations and individuals reach the potential and grow as well. So that's a little bit about me. Okay, for, for today's workshop, because uh, to, it's only a one hour, sorry, today webinar, it's only a one hour. So these are the few things that we're going to learn. Uh, this is some of the key mindsets of an effective leader. I think that's an important aspect of what we do. Uh, to draw some differences, or at least to know the differences, what I think are the differences between a leader and a manager. And how to connect and build stronger relationships with different personality styles. For this webinar itself, because it's only one hour, I won't be able to go through a profiling and for you to dive deep into the different styles. Uh, in the workshop itself, if you attend the workshop, what you'll be learning is a profiling tool called Enneagram. So you'll be doing a profiling using Enneagram to understand a little bit more about yourself, your leadership styles, as well as how do you connect with the different styles as well. For today's workshop, I hope that all of us will be able to also spend a bit of time to, you know, to participate, right? Participation, really, I hope that today, even though it's a small group, we can do this portion here, right? Where, you know, where I hope that you can participate. So participation means that there'll be some points that I'll be asking you some questions and for you to ask some, and to do some reflection as well. So I hope that all of you can also uh, ask some questions and share some answers as well. And there'll be some minor activities along the way that there'll be some writing that I want you to do. So do, do, so do do that as well. The key point about this, right, if in order to retain, so this portion here, I'll just highlight here, right, in order to retain at least 70% of the knowledge, right, uh, two weeks later, the key point here that of course all of us need to do is we need to participate. Okay, so I hope that, in, so I hope that all of us here will be able to share a little bit and participate. Okay, so can you just type on into the chat group? Is that okay for all of us to participate for today's session? Just key into the chat group there. Thank you, thank you, Isaac. Thank you, Adrian. Hey, sorry, uh, Michelle, Joanne, Terence, Geraldine, Kelvin. Thanks, Joanna. Thanks, thank you very much. All right. So the first, uh, the second activity. Let's do an activity now. Okay, I'll let you to. Uh, you can either. Uh, use unmute yourself and share what do you think are some of the challenges faced at your workplace or you can type it down into the chat group as well. I'd just like you to reflect a little bit of time and just to think what are some of the challenges faced at your workplace. Okay, the time is yours. Flow of information from Joanne. Flow of information due to the size of the company. Okay, very good. Thank you, Joanne. Anybody else? You could also unmute yourself and share.
Handling stakeholders from Andrew. Thank you. Handling stakeholders. Okay. Yeah, stakeholders can be quite challenging. Stakeholders can uh, need not just be those above us, can also be just our clients or our customers as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, maybe maybe I can just invite a few of, of uh, few people. Geraldine, the need to continuously adapt to change. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Change. Change is the only constant, especially now, right? With COVID-19. Uh, I think we find that it's even more difficult, right? The new norm, they call it now, there's a term there. Uh, may I invite uh, maybe uh, Hui San or Hazel to share a little bit? What do you think are the challenges faced at your workplace? Hui San or Hazel? Okay, how about uh, Isaac? Anything to share, Isaac? Okay, how about Michelle? Michelle, anything that you want to share? Some of the challenges that you face at work? Okay, Michelle, getting employed to cooperate with you to get things done. Thank you very much. Okay, good. So, so these are some of the challenges. So in, in, a, in the actual workshop, we'll be spending a bit more time to talk about the challenges. But I think at the end of the day, right, you'll come to realize that these are some of the key points that, uh, that people are facing at the workplace. Majority of the challenges at work, uh, at work are, sorry, are people issues, not... Okay, so I apologize for the word. The majority of the challenges at work are people issues, not at people issues, are people issues. Isaac, sorry, was having a bit of problem with internet. Ideal for business continuation. Ideas for business continuation. Okay, thank you, Isaac. Yeah, so the majority of the challenges at work are people issues. I apologize for the spelling mistake there. And number two, right? I think we realize that because of all these challenges that, uh, that we want to achieve our goals, right? And we achieve our goals and objective with or true people, right? So as leaders of organization or leaders of teams, we need to be able to achieve our results and objective through people or with our people. And we realize that actually the key thing is that the challenges that we face uh, a lot of times are people issues as well, okay? Great. So maybe at workplace, some of you may be feeling this way, right? Where you, as a leader, you want to move forward but you're finding some resistance from some of your staff, right? I think from uh, one of them, from Geraldine, continuously adapt to change, or from, from Andrew, right? Managing stakeholders. Sometimes stakeholders can also be throwing a lot of resistance. And I hope that most of you at your organization, you're not feeling this, right? Where people are killing and fighting each other off as well. I think that, was a, that would be a challenging moment for all of us there. So I hope that at your workplace, you're not, you're not facing this kind of challenges, which can, which can be quite challenging. All right. Okay, great. Next one. Uh, who is this gentleman here? Who is this gentleman here? Anybody, any idea? Uh, Bolt, Hussein Bolt, Joanne, thank you. Terence, thank you. Yeah, that's Hussein Bolt, right? So, can I just ask you a question? I mean, just type it out as quick as you can. Can all of us here, can all of us be an Olympic runner? Is it possible for all of us to be an Olympic runner? Uh, Michelle, no. Terence, no. Or oh, Terence say no, no. Fiona say no. Yeah, that's right. So all of us, yeah, all of us won't be able to be an Olympic runner. The question, I guess, all of us can is, can all of us be a runner? Can all of us jog? And the answer is yes, of course, right? It's definite. So while all of us may not be Hussein Bolt, so to me, Hussein Bolt could be the, the CEO of an organization, the number one man, the biggest, the strongest, the fastest. But we don't have to be the strong, biggest, the strongest, and the fastest. All we need to do as a leader is that we need to be able to lead our team. All we need to be able to is to manage our team. So, so long as you have even one person, one person here, all right, one individual or two individuals in your team, you are already that leader. 
because they are looking up to you to learn from you. They are looking up to you for guidance. They are looking up to you for information as well. Okay, so so long as you're even at one individual with you, I think it's important for all of us to know that we are leading already. And what if I don't have anyone? Well, then it doesn't really matter because we can still what we call self-leadership, right? I'm leading myself first. Because a lot of times, if you go in any organization, right, if we can't lead ourselves very, very well, then the challenge when it comes to leading the second person here or even the third person here may be even more challenging as well. Okay. So feel free, if you have any questions, just feel free to ask along the way. Okay. So life will change when I change. Do we agree to that? Life will change when I change. Can we agree to that? Yes, Terence agree, thank you. Isaac, thank you. Yes, Andrew, Geraldine, Michelle, thank you. Fiona, thank you very much. So life will change when I change. And what about this one? What about life will continue to change even if I don't change? So what does it mean to all of us or what does it mean to you if life continues to change or society continues to change uh, and I don't change? What's the impact of that? Okay, please think about it. What do you think is the impact if life or society? Yes, okay, Terence, fall behind, left, left out. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah, that's right. So uh, we will be left out, right? We will be left behind. So I conduct a lot of workshops for PMETs who are unemployed. Uh, in fact, now I'm helping an organization who have just retrenched about uh, 20 people, okay? And there's a lot of uh, negative emotions and fear coming up from there. And they realize that, yes, they there's always a need to adapt to changes. There's always a need to be able to manage ourselves well. Okay, so if we, if we don't change or we don't embrace change, we will definitely be left behind or left out. Okay, so can I invite you just to draw this circle? You take a piece of paper now and a pen of, or paper and pencil. Just draw these three circles, three, three concentric circles. One small, one medium, and one large. And then uh, label it called uh, locus of control and influence. Okay, I'll give you some time to do that. Okay, so just draw three concentric circles. Okay, one small one, which is green in color for you, one slightly medium, which is blue, and one red. Okay. Are we okay? Let's have, can I just have a show, uh, some feedback on the chat? Okay, Terence say, okay, done already. Done, Joanne, ten, done, thank you, thank you. Okay, Michelle. Fiona, thank you very much. And Andrew, thank you. Okay, great. Since most of you have replied, I'll move to the next slide. All right, so can you write, there'll be three boxes. Uh, so one at the bottom, as you can see from there, is you can just write it down, what I can control and can influence. That's small, small and green. Okay, very thank you. The blue color, which is the middle one, is what I cannot control, but can influence. And the last one, which is the biggest one, is what I cannot control and cannot influence. So these are the three circles and the three zones. So I'd like you to think through and give me some examples, right? And write down on your piece of paper, what are examples of what are things that I can control and can influence? Okay, then i just write it down first, then I'll, I'll solicit the feedback from all of you at the same time. And what is one or two examples of what I cannot control, but can influence? And what are some examples, one or two, of what I cannot control and cannot influence? Okay, I'll give you, a bit, I'll give you about, uh, about a minute just to write, think through about this, then I'll start to ask you. Thank you.
Okay. So maybe can you just type it into the chat group or if you want, you can just unmute yourself and share. What are examples of the small little green color? What I can control and can influence? What comes to your mind? Myself from Terence. Thank you. My thoughts, feelings and emotion from Michelle Ao. Very good. Thank you. My own work spoke and attitude to my workplace, to my own work. Very good. Thank you, Joanne. My feelings, Hazel. Thank you. Career choices, Andrew. Excellent. Very good. Yeah. Any more? Okay, good. So, as rightly pointed out, uh, what I can control and can influence are my thoughts, beliefs, emotions. Uh, Hazel also mentioned my, de uh, my decision. That's right. So, my thoughts... On the PowerPoint slide is my thoughts, beliefs, emotions, and responses. So you realize the word is called responses and it's not called uh, reaction. Because response, I always believe there is a pause before you respond as compared to react. React is more uh, immediate. When something happens, you just react immediately. Okay, good. When I did this workshop uh, for the home team, there was once when one officer, senior officer, he said, oh, what I can control and can influence is my team. Do you all agree to that? What I can control and can influence is my team. Mm, Terence say no. Okay. Can control but not influence. Okay. Can control but not necessarily influence. That's right. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yeah. That's right. So so what I did was at when when the individual senior officer uh, mentioned about it that he say what I can control and can influence is my team. And of, and of course, in order, not to, um, in order not to embarrass him, I just asked the whole class, right? Uh, so how many of you raise your hand if you like to be controlled and, can in, and who would like to be controlled and influenced by your bosses? And none of them, and none of them raised their hands, right? Uh, but of course, then when I asked how many of you would like to be able to influence your team? Okay? How many of you would like to be influenced by your bosses? And a lot of them raised their hands, right? So, so we realized that he came to realize that the senior officer came to realize that, well, that's true. Uh, no one likes to be controlled, but all of us don't mind being influenced. So which goes down to the next point. What I cannot control, but I can influence definitely then it goes down to other people's thoughts, beliefs, emotions, and responses. So what I cannot control, but can definitely influence. So as a leader, we have to acknowledge that, yes, we can't control people's emotions, but we can definitely influence their emotions. We can't control stakeholders, but we can definitely influence stakeholders. We can definitely con cannot control their beliefs, but we can influence their beliefs, our team beliefs as well. Great. So now that we know what is the green and what is the blue, then what is the red? What are some examples of what I cannot control and cannot influence? What comes to your mind? Any answers? What are some examples? <laughs> Andrew, thank you. Death and taxes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So that's something that we cannot control and cannot influence. Natural disasters. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> Environment, yeah, that's right. Environment, yes, very good. Okay, good. So, so uh, these are some of us. These are people's people's choices. Hmm, okay, what I cannot control, what I cannot control, and cannot influence people's choices, actions from others. Okay, hopefully from uh, external variables. Kelvin Gunn, thank you very much. Kelvin, maybe uh, what what are external variables? What comes to your mind when you put uh, external variables and also from Isaac and Hazel maybe can you just elaborate a little bit more what comes to your mind when you say people's choices for Isaac and Hazel is action from others what comes to your mind when it comes to something that I cannot control and cannot influence any thoughts Oh, okay, from Kelvin, he said, uh, COVID-19, economy changes. Okay, got it. I understand for that. Thank you very much. 
from Isaac and uh, Hazel, any, any thoughts? Or could you elab elaborate a little bit more about that? The way they respond, okay, the way they respond to situation, okay? Thank you, Hazel. I guess Isaac would be quite similar as well, okay? So I hope that uh, for Isaac and Hazel, that we maybe we can have a, a mindset that instead of putting them in the red sector here, instead of putting them in the red sector here, right, this area here, hopefully we can we'll be able to put them into the group into the blue sector. Okay, instead of putting them here into the red sector, we want to put them into the blue sector for people responses and people's choices. Because we may not be able to control them, but we want to have a mindset that we can influence them as well. Okay, Isaac said, I agree that we can influence, but in terms of the decision and choices they want, I don't think we have a control. Yep, definitely, you're definitely right. We don't have a control, right? But we can hope that we can influence them as well, right? We can influence our loved ones. We can influence our colleagues. We can influence our team, right? To the way that we want them to do. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing. Okay. So, uh, some examples that in the workshop that people have used, the weather, the tide, world economy, time. And someone even put Donald Trump there, right? That's possible as well, I guess. But it's something you cannot control and cannot influence him as well. Okay, good. So, uh, in another workshop that I did, um, someone, uh, a lady said this, what I can control and can influence is my present, right now, what I'm doing. Okay, I think that's very apt in what she said that. What I cannot control, but can influence, she said, is my future. I think that's also very excellent, an excellent thought, right? I cannot control my future, but I can definitely influence the outcome that I wanted by taking control and influencing myself right now. So I can, inf I can get the blue by focusing on the green. And what I cannot control and cannot influence is, what she said is, my past, okay? So I think that's a wonderful uh, metaphor as well, right? I can control and influence my present moment now, the choices, my responses, my actions, in order, and therefore that will help me to create the future that I want. And anything that's red, which is my past, there's no point holding on to it, it's time to let it go. Okay, good. The last thing I'd like you to do in, in this drawing for your locus of control and, and influence is to just to do this, just to draw out, expand your blue circle and draw arrows from there. All right, and just to draw arrows from there. This is to have a mindset that as a leader, right, we always want to have a, a positive mindset that to expand my locus of influence. Okay, to expand my influence. Okay. All right, great. Okay, do we all have a comfort zone? Is it big or small? What are your thoughts? Comfort zone, big or small? Yes, so so. Terence says so so. Uh, Huisan says yes, you have a comfort zone. So, Huisan, is yours big or small? Comfort zone. How about the rest of you? Kelvin? Big. Michelle says hers is big. Thank you. Big for Huisan. Thank you very much. How about the rest of you? Comfort zone, what comes to your mind, big or small? Quite big from Andrew, thank you. <laughs> big too, okay, good. All right, big, 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 okay, good. So, so just, just I know I can't see you in the video, but just, just do this, right? Just stretch your arms a little bit and just do this, the big, and just say out loud to yourself, the bigger my comfort zone, all right, just do this, the bigger my comfort zone, and then do this, right? the smaller my success. Okay, one more time, huh? The bigger my comfort zone, the smaller my success. Okay. Uh, let's give an example. How many of you, uh, most of you work, I, I assume most of you work in a corporate, how many of you believe that being able to give a good presentation uh, in a meeting is important for your career? Do you agree that's important? Yes, agreed, agreed, yes. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, how many of you, are very comfortable to do a presentation. 
let's say 50 people, 20 people, 500 people, depends on your audience. How many of you are very comfortable to do that? Some of you would be, but some of you may not be. So I'm just curious to find out more. Comfortable from Joanne, thank you. Comfy, okay. Depends on the subject of presentation, Terence, thank you. Not very comfortable, not comfortable. Thank you for being honest for that as well, I think. All right, so just let me share with you an example. Uh, when I was in the military, right, a long time ago, my boss, uh, I was doing a rehearsal and my boss said, Adrian, can I give you some feedback? And I said, okay. He said, uh, he took a deep breath. He sighed and he said, uh, your presentation sucks. Okay, wow, that, that really caught me off guard. And he said, okay, so let's say, uh, this is a point. This is a pointer, and it asked me to point to this little red dot there on the screen. Okay, instead of pointing exactly there, I was pointing here. It was my pointer was moving all over the place. Okay, all over the place, except at this red dot here. And I was using a lot of vowels, right? Uh, a I O U. So like a lot of hesitant. What do you think is going through my mind? Why was I demonstrating and behaving that way? The one of the reasons, of course, right, you know, right, is because I'm not, I wasn't very comfortable with doing presentation. So, uh, and my, say, so, so my, my leader said, you know, if I were to ask you to present to, in our army contact, the chief of army, and you keep doing all of this, uh, moving around, point, you know, not pointing at the correct spot and having a lot of uh, vowels coming out, uh, a, no, your career will be not good, right? So he asked me to step out of my comfort zone. Okay, he he encouraged me to say, please step out of your comfort zone to go and learn how to become a better presenter. Okay. And I realized through my journey of doing presentation that actually presentation is all in the mind, right? For those who are those of you who know you're comfortable, it's all in the it depends on it's all in our mindset. There's a fine line between excitement and fear. Physiologically, they're all the same, the way you feel, but your perception of it creates the feeling. Okay. So I hope that all of us today can also have a mindset, right, to step out of our comfort zone. As leaders, actually one of the key points to me as leaders that we need to be able to always have the first step to step out of our comfort zone. All right, so Dr. Go Kingsi wrote this. He said this, or he didn't write it, I think he said this. The only way to avoid making mistakes is not to do anything, right? And in the final analysis, that would be the ultimate mistake. Okay, so I hope that when, when we go for workshops or we go for webinars, uh, we share, we talk, we make as many mistakes as we can. Because I always find it strange if people go for a workshop and they want to look good. And then they, when they go back to the office, they make the mistakes. So in workshops, we should have the mindset that we should, we should have made as many mistakes as possible. So that when we go back to the work, when we go back to the workplace, we look good. Okay. So let's look at this. Anybody, has anybody used this before? Use this phone. This is called a Taikotai, tai, right? In the 1970s and 80s. Anybody seen it before? Used it before? Oh, Kelvin. Yes, very good. Okay, so phone's evolution, you realize has moved from here, right? To Nokia at one point in time. And then now, of course, you notice the, the model has, has now this, uh, this is Samsung. The shape has been the same, but it looks exact, yeah? it looks the same as well. So that's a phone evolution. And then there's our typewriter. We became a word processor and now become a desktop. So let's look at this, right? If you know, to me, okay, maybe in Singapore, Apple and Samsung could be the leaders in phone as well as technology here, yeah, let's say for example. And we realize, right, that if they continue to step, stay within the comfort zone, if they say, oh, we achieved a certain success and let's, let's stop innovating, right? If they, say, if they stop innovating, if they stop, uh, improving themselves. What's going to happen? What's going to happen to them? What's going to happen to the organization if they choose to stop innovating and stop stepping out of the comfort zone? What's going to happen to them? Any thoughts? Overtaken by competitors from Winston. Thank you very much. Become obsolete. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah, that's right. So you realize that they will be lost, uh, Geraldine, Geraldine, yes, that's right. They will lose the market share as well. So there's always a need to continue to step out of the comfort zone to continue to, continue to innovate. Let's look at Singapore for an example. Where is this place? This was taken by a tourist in 1994. I found this in, uh, in YouTube. 
and I just took a snapshot of the picture. This was taken by tourists in December 1994. Where is this place? Anyone? Mar Marina South? MBS area? Yeah, that's right. Okay, Winston, yeah. So 18 years later, right, he, this tourist, very interesting, he came back to the same hotel and he went back to the same point and then he took this picture. So it was a continuous video and then he took this. So as you can see, right, Singapore always continuously continue to innovate as well. It's quite clear to see, right, from here, the circle here. Can you see here? This part here is the where the banana is, right? Here. Yeah. So from a, from a nation perspective, we are continuously upgrading ourselves. We are continually finding ways to improve. So as a leader, I think that one of the key mindsets that we need to have in this, I'm sharing with you for this, is that we need to always continue to have a new set of thinking. Um, one gentleman said this, um, not me, not, not me, but a very wise man said, and maybe some of you may know, insanity is doing the same thing again and again, but expecting different results. Anybody know who, who the gentleman who said that? Insanity is doing the same thing again and again, but expecting different results. Yeah, yep. Okay, thank you, Andrew. Yep, the answer is Einstein. Okay, so same old thinking, same old results. So if if you look at our organization or if you look at the results that you're getting, if we are not getting any better, then we may need to think about are we doing the same thing again and again? Have we changed our mindset? Have we changed our thought process? Okay, so that's what we want to do, right? So we need to challenge ourselves that we cannot have continuously having this same old thinking because what's going to happen, we are going to have the same old results. Okay. I did this workshop in Malaysia. I was doing a workshop in Malaysia and I saw this on a wall. I thought it was very, very nicely uh, written. Okay. It's uh, by this quote called J.D. Houston. He said, if you want something in your life you never had, then you have to do something that you've never done before, right? So true. And therefore, what it means that as leaders, we must continuously have new mindsets in order to achieve new results. Because new mindsets will create the opportunity to do something different and therefore new results. Okay? Because the reality is that, ladies and gentlemen, everything, in life, everything that you want is outside of your comfort zone. If you want to be fitter, you need to do something different. Maybe eat more healthier food. Right? Not eat more junk food, eat healthier food. Exercise more. Right? Uh, in order to build a better relationship, maybe we need to be more forgiving. Uh, maybe in, a, in an organization, in the team, you need to listen more instead of pointing finger at other people more. Right? So it's, a, it's about doing something different. Because everything that we want is outside of our comfort zone. Therefore, we need to continually step out of our comfort zone. So, at, at our workshop, if you come for the workshop, you will learn seven key, to be key mindsets. Because it's only a one-day workshop. So, for today is a webinar, I will share with you one of it. One of the key things to me, right, as leaders that we need to have this thing called continuous improvement, which is called continually step out of our comfort zone. So, at the workshop itself, with Aventis, you will learn the other remaining uh, six more, to me, I think are important mindsets that in order for us to become good leaders. Okay, great. So now we're moving on to the second one. I'd just like you to think about, so now we have covered, we just covered the first one, which is uh, one of the key mindsets. There, there are a few, a few things there. I'm gonna cover now the next thing is what do you think is the differences between a leader and a manager? Okay, great. So you spend most of your time, I just like you to think about this, right? You spend most of your time in the workplace with your team. Sometimes some people will spend more, more, invest more of their time at work than at home because based on the nature of the work, right? So just write down how do you want your team to function? It could be two people, it could be 20 people in your team, but could you just write down in the chat group, how would you want your team to function? What comes to your mind? Any 
anyone any thoughts? How will you want your team to function at the workplace? Helping one another to achieve the same goal. Joanne, thank you. Collaboratively, thank you, Andrew. Happy doing what they are doing. <laughs> thank you, yeah. That's really wonderful. That's right. Happy doing what they're doing. Hopefully what they're doing is your company's work. <laughs> okay, Geraldine, thank you. Anybody else? Any thoughts? What comes to your mind? How will you want your team to function? Complementing each other to achieve common objectives. Very good, thank you. Yep, we all have strengths and we also have possible challenges, weaknesses as well. Thank you. Work towards the same goals as set. Yep, Hazel, thank you very much. Kelvin, complementing each other to achieve common objectives. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we all have different strengths and weaknesses. Um, so when you come for our workshop, we'll also be doing a little bit of um, Enneagram. So when you do Enneagram, you understand your strengths as well as some of your possible weaknesses as well. And therefore, you can complement each other as well. Thank you. Anybody, any other thoughts? Okay, good. Thank you very much for your, for your sharing. All right, can I invite you just to do this, to draw this out? This is called the core theory of success. This comes from learning organizations. So just draw these four boxes and, and label out the piece called core theory of success. And let me know when you're done, so that then I know when to continue. Thank you. Okay, when you're done, just let me know. Just type it into the chat group so that I can so that I know when to move forward. Thank you very much. Hazel say work to the same goal as set. Thank you. Done. Thank you, Hazel. Michelle, thank you. Okay, good. Excellent. Okay, great. Thank you, Joanne as well, Fiona and Geraldine and Huishan as well. Okay, so I'll move forward. Okay, great. So there are four boxes. What we're gonna do later when you label it, when you label the first box, let me see where's my highlighter. Oh, I lost my highlighter. Hold on, huh? I lost my highlighter. So let me okay, point. All right. So later when we start, please write down the first, I'm gonna flash out the first word. Later, just, uh, just write it onto this column here. Okay. Right. So, under learning organizations for core, under the th uh, theory called core theory of success, the first thing is you can write the word called results. Or oh, Andrew mentioned managing diversity. Okay. Thank you. So, um, is it fair to say that we, have been, that we are employed by our organization to achieve results? Is it, is it fair to say that? I think it's fair to say in any organization, we are paid to achieve results. Yep, thank you, Hazel. Yep, that's true. Okay, let's, let's ask ourselves this question. The quality of our results, okay, the quality of our results here is dependent on the quality of something here. Something here that moves towards here and it starts the letter A. What, what do you think the answer could be? The quality of our, start with the letter A, will lead to the quality of our results. Attitudes, thank you, Michelle. Attitude, very good. Kelvin, thank you. Any other thoughts? Any, any other words besides attitude? Quality of our something, will lead, ability, Winston, thank you very much. Anything else? Ability, I hear, I see ability, I see attitude. The, the quality of our A leads to the quality of our results. Attitude, Michelle, thank you. Okay, great. Thank you very much for your participation. Um, the answer is the quality of our actions. Okay, the quality of our actions will lead to the quality of our results. Okay, the quality of our actions will lead to the quality of our results. So under learning, learning organization, the next one is here. The quality of something here, start with T. T, the quality of our leads to the quality of our actions that lead to the quality of our results. Okay, the quality of our thoughts. Very good, thoughts, thoughts. Okay, very similar. The answer, the, the similar word is called thinking. 
Okay, thoughts, thinking, I think it's the same. Uh, I, I use the word conversation. I think it's easier for most people. Because thinking, it can be quite abstract. Uh, is it my thinking? But if you use the word conversation, then we know it is a collective conversation. So the quality of our conversation, our thinking or planning, some people use that, will lead to the quality of our action that we take. And therefore, will eventually lead to the quality of the results. Very good. So the last one, at the top box here. Okay, at the top box here. The quality of our, start with R. The quality of our, start with the letter R, leads to the quality of our conversation or thinking, that leads to the quality of our actions, that eventually lead to the quality of our results. What could R be? The letter R. Response, reaction, thank you. Excellent. Okay, the, qual the qual quality of our, anything else come to your mind? Response, I hear response, reactions. Anybody else, any other thoughts? Start with the letter R here. Okay, our, the, the literature says the quality of our relationship. Okay, the quality of our relationships will lead to the quality of our thinking or our conversation that will lead to the quality of our actions that will eventually lead to the quality of our results, which is here. Okay, okay. is it possible to achieve results in an organization without this? without relationships. Is it possible? It means we just focus on the thinking, action, and results. We just, very hard, Terence, thank you. Very hard. Okay, Terence says, possible. Michelle said possible, that's right, it's possible. Unless it is a one-man show. <laughs> okay, Joanne, thank you. He talked to himself. himself. Only if you work in a cave. Okay, good, all right. Okay, so the answer is, it's possible. Okay, it is possible, especially in the context. Of, uh, I do a lot of workshops sometimes in the military or in MHA, right, where they're focused on the home team, for example, right? So they do say it's possible. Even in uh, MMC, it is possible if you don't have good relationship here. If you don't have good relationship, it's hard. Okay, it's possible, but it's hard as well. Then the next question is that if you don't have the relationship to foster in the quality of success, what is the price to pay? For the organization if we just focus on results and action and thinking here if we focus on this tree without the relationship but we still manage to achieve good results but what is the price the organization pays what comes to your mind what is the price that we pay if we don't focus on the relationship and we just focus on results yes Darren says employees we have no sense of belonging Good, thank you. Good benefits. Michelle, what do you mean by good benefits? What is the, I, what do you mean by that? Because I asked what is the cost, uh, the price the organization pays. Reduce productivity and effectiveness, low morale between staff. Yep. Sustainability is at risk. Yep. Okay, good, thank you. So most of you uh, kind of understand, right? That if we don't have, if we don't have the good relationship, I mean, we all work in organizations before. We all understand, right? That the work can be quite, tough, quite shitty, quite terrible. But some people actually stay also because of the team, the people, right? Because they, they, enjoy the, they, they enjoy the relationship there as well. So therefore it is important for us and we lose good people, you know, if we don't build this relationship, if we do not have this element here where relationship is part of it, we will actually lose good people. And some, and most organizations, not all, well, okay, to be fair, maybe some organizations, or the managers, right? They don't realize there's a big price to pay when we lose good people. And the price to pay, it is actually six months to one year pain because we need to recruit, we need to train, and we need to level them up to the knowledge again. So, and then we lose that six months to one month of productivity and time as well. So therefore, as leaders, okay, I would like to encourage you to have this mindset to have as well, okay? which is focus on the results, which is what we are, that is our job. That's what we're paid to do. Start with the relationship. Okay, so I'd like to say that again. Huh? Focus on the results, start with the relationship. 
because it's the relationship that actually sustains the whole organization. Okay, great. Okay, I'm going to move forward now. All right, what comes to your mind? Just could, you, could some of you just throw out some answers? What are the differences between a leader and a manager? At the actual workshop, we'll be doing not just discussion, but we'll be doing some other activities as well. But for this, because it's a webinar, just what comes to your mind? What do you think are the differences between a leader and a manager? A leader is this and a manager is that. What is that? Any thoughts? Okay, Winston, you mentioned take credit and push blame. Oh, which is a leader or manager? Leader, lead and guide the team. Joanne, leader is visionary, manager target is to achieve the goal and vision. Okay, thank you. Anybody have any other thoughts? What's the difference between a leader and a manager? Some overlap. Manager can be manager can be a leader, but leader doesn't need to be a manager. Leader inspire. Leader is a sergeant. Manager is like a CEO. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So, okay. Manager manage. Manager is a taskmaster. Okay. Good. Thank you. All right. Excellent. Excellent points. So, uh, of course, in the workshop we'll be spending more time uh, discussing on this. Uh, but I'll just jump straight into it in the so that we can also just learn from this, all right? So this is my Venn diagram where there's a leader between, an a, a overlap between a leader and a manager roles that we play, okay? So to me, a leader is the one that creates the vision, direction, and inspiration. And a manager, which is just as important, right, is to instill good operational processes. We need both, that's for sure, in any organization. And what's the, the middle part there in the Venn diagram? Is this part, right? To achieve results with and through others, with and through our team, with and through our stakeholders, for example, as well. Okay, so a leader and a manager. Okay, so you can take a screenshot of this if you wish to. And I'm going to show you the next slide, uh, which is even more words, but just a little bit more in details, right? Between a leader and a manager. So you can just take, just take a screenshot for that. So I just want to highlight this point that even though we feel that uh, there are differences, but actually the key thing, I think the important point uh, for you is to reflect, which one are you doing more at the workplace? Okay, I, I'm not expecting an answer right now. I just want you to reflect on this. Which one are you focusing more at the workplace? Both are just as important. Okay, both are just as important. Okay, we need to do both. The question that I will ask you in the workshop is, are you doing this first or are you doing this first at the workplace? And what mindset are you, what mindset do you bring along to the workplace? If you say your, your mindset is more of a manager because you've got to manage a lot of issues, then you could be doing more of this stuff. But if you say your mindset is more of a leader first, then you may be doing a lot of this stuff first. But at the end of the day, we need to do both. I think that's also an important aspect to realize that we need to do both roles. Okay, both roles are just as important. And what's important, I think you to realize that which role are you doing first? What mindset are you bringing to the workplace? Okay, so there's a difference between a leader and a manager. Okay. The last point is just to, tell, just to share a little bit about how do you connect with and build stronger relationships with different personality styles. At the workshop itself, you'll be learning the nine different Enneagram styles and therefore you will understand your own personality first. At the same time, you start to appreciate why the different people in your organization, in your teams, at the family, also behave differently. It is because of the mindset or the behavior styles that is different as well. Okay? I won't be going through Enneagram in detail for this, but definitely when we come for the workshop, we'll be diving deep into it. Okay. If you look at this called the golden rule, how many of you agree to this, to this rule? Treat others the way you want to be treated. Do you agree? 
Okay, Terence say yes, thank you. Yep. Yep. Yes, very good. Fiona, thank you. Andrew, yes, thank you very much. Definitely, very good. Yes. Anybody disagree? Anybody disagree? Anyone disagree? Anyone? Just checking. Okay, good. So, I would say that this golden rule, this is a good rule. It's not bad. In the context of, in the context of building um, respect, I think that's good. Right? If, I want to be, if I want to be, be treated with respect, I'll treat you with respect. In, in the context of communication, in the context of uh, how do you talk to a person, their styles, then it's not that applicable. Okay, so I'm just going to jump straight into it. At the workshop, we can talk more about it. We call this, can you just write down this called the platinum rule? Do unto others as they want done unto them. As they want done unto them. Okay, so now instead of, instead of doing this style, we are focusing on what done unto them. Okay, Hazel says, sometimes people don't treat you the way you treat them. Yeah, that's true as well. Thank you. So what we want to, what do you mean by that? If let me tell you, let's say an example. If if my boss is a taskmaster, very focused on tasks, and I'm very relationship. If I want to connect, communicate to my boss, should I be building the relationship first, or should I be focusing on the re, on the task first? The answer is quite simple, right? Focus on the task because that's what his point of view is. Do unto others as they want done unto them. For example. So if my boss, if my if my leader or my subordinate is more a relationship person, right? As you go through the Enneagram, you will start to see different styles. And then, so but I'm a taskmaster. If I were to use the golden rule, I would just focus on the task first, which may not be so good because the person will start feeling, hey, you're so task-centric. Why are you not spending time building the relationship with me first? So the platinum rule gives us the opportunity for us here to connect with them to their style first, right? Different, different strokes for different folks, right? For those of you who have children, okay, I have four children, so I know their different styles. So I definitely want to treat them with respect and I want them to treat me with respect as well for here. But at the same time, in order to communicate well with them, I need to understand their style as well. Are they more uh, people-centric? Are they more task-centric? Are they more moving towards the issues that they want? Okay, so, so we need to focus on this, all right? We can go more in, into it, uh, more in depth when we go into the workshop itself. Okay, so in Enneagram, at the workshop, you do a simple profiling and you learn your style in these nine places here, okay? So there will be this thing called the good person. We call it type one. Type two is called the loving style. Type three is called the effective. Type four is the original. Type five is the wise. Type six is the loyal. Seven is the joyful. Eight is the powerful. And nine is the peaceful. At the workshop, you get to understand your leadership styles and how, and then you understand how that motivates you. At the same time, you also, as you can go back, you can also reflect your team styles. Maybe you realize that your style, you could be a good person. But your, but your team could be one of them is a joyful person. So in order to connect with them, you need to communicate in their style first. Okay? So that's what you will learn in, in, at the workshop. All right, let's do a quick little uh, activity here. We're almost finishing soon already. I just want you to realize about the importance of styles. So can, I'm just going to flash out four words. I would like you to write as fast as you can these four words. Okay? And then when you're done, just type out onto the chat group that, you, that you're done. Okay, write these four words as fast as you can. Ready and go. Oops, sorry. Ah. Okay, just write as fast as you can. And when you're finished writing, just type onto the chat group that is done. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. Done. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you, Taryn. Integrity, I can change. Oh, thank you, Geraldine. Excellent. Okay, great. So can I invite you now to, to the pen, right? If your pen is on your left hand, please change it to your right hand. If your pen is on the right hand, please change it to your left hand and I'm going to flash out a new set of words again. 
Okay. All right, so please change to your non-master hand now. Okay, I'm going to flash out the words and write as fast as you can. And when you're done, please type done. Okay, when anybody are done, just type done into the chat group so that I know that you have, that you have completed writing. Done, Joanne. Thank you. Okay. All right. So I'm sure if you look at the writing, you realize that it's uh, very different. And the feeling and the, the flow of the writing using your master hand and non-master hand is very different. This is a, exactly the same Enneagram, right? So it's like you putting your hands together, there's a certain specific style. So even if you hold your hands together this way, there's a natural style for you. If I ask you to fold the other way, you realize that it's different and it also feels different as well. So an Enneagram or in any profiling tool, right, you all have a specific style, preferred style. And that's, your how, and that's similar to your handwriting using your master hand. So when you use that style, it's very natural. But your natural style and my style could be very different based on the Enneagram profiling. And in order to communicate with me, sometimes we should use the platinum rule. Communicate in my style first so that, so that we can work well. And I need to know your style and I can communicate in your style as well. So we adapt. So one of the principles of leadership is also about the ability to adapt. Okay, okay good. So that's all we have for today. We're almost in an hour. I'd just like you to think through uh, even though we just spent one hour together uh, for you, and I really, and I really, I'm very touched by your participation as well. I just like you to spend one time, some time now, uh, and maybe to reflect what are, what is the key insight of the learning that you have gained from today's webinar as well. Okay, and then just to type it into the chat group so that when you share, right, everybody learns from you as well. What is one key insight that you have learned from today? Oh, yeah, thank you. What comes to your mind? Relationship building is key to success. Winston, thank you very much. Quarter of success and platinum rule. Terence, thank you. People or relationship are key. So, and thank you very much. Anybody else? Any other thoughts? Locus of control and, and locus of influence. Andrew, thank you. Hazel is about relationships. Thank you. So whatever you learned today, I also encourage you to also apply it back at home. It's exactly the same. Okay, relationship is key to achieving results. Kelvin, thank you very much. Platinum rule is new. Ah, Michelle, thank you. Yeah, platinum rule is new. It's definitely a new concept. A lot of us know about the golden rule, but platinum rule is something new. I think we are applying it, but we just didn't think of it in that perspective, in that way. Okay, okay great. Any, any more? Okay. So, um, if you were to join us for our workshop, uh, these are some of the key things that you'll be learning at the actual workshop. Some, you learn not just one, that we, today we just shared one. Of course, we'll go through uh, more discussions and in-depth about it, but we'll definitely learn the seven key mindsets to me of an effective leader. Then you understand your leadership style through Enneagram. I think that's also a very important thing. So we actually squeeze two very big components into one workshop. All right. This one can be actually done in two separate days, one day, but what we did was we wanted to squeeze everything in so that we can give you a value, really good value for money. So understand your leadership styles as well through Enneagram. And then of course, in the last one is motivate your team through the seven powerful mindsets and through Enneagram as well. There will be activities like profiling. There'll be lots of discussion and sharing. Of course, at the actual workshop itself, I will, we will definitely encourage you to talk and share via video rather than just typing it out. Because I think that's where we can learn even better um, okay, so a few more learnings just want to share. Uh, Hazel is relationship. Geraldine is dual role of leader and manager. Kelvin is leadership key to achieving results and platinum rule. Okay, good. So there'll be lots of videos as well. So I'm not showing any videos for this workshop, but in the, at my actual workshop itself, there'll be more than 10 videos that will showcase along the way. Uh, there'll also be a case study and of course, reflection like what we did as well. 
So these are the things that we'll be doing at the workshop. Um, let's see what else is there. Anything else? Yeah, okay. So I just want to share with you uh, one more thing. It's this, right? Oops. Can you see this? Or can you see the Aventus? Or you're still seeing the PowerPoint slide? I'm not sure. This is new. Okay, hold on. What are, what are you seeing? Aventus. Okay, good. Thank you. So on the Aventus one, um, so this is the this is Aventus. They've been establishing to who are we, 208, and they have won many awards. And they're offering a suite of different seminars and workshops. So for the coming webinar or the workshop on powerful keys of effective leadership, it's on the 11th of May, um, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay. And also, if you use this special promo code, you get a 20% discount. It's valid all the way to 8. So for those who are keen to join me uh, for the workshop to learn more, uh, please, you can consider keying in. Uh, scanning the QR code right here or you can take a snapshot of this picture here where you can talk to Rina, Miss Rina, call a number or at a, at a handphone number. Okay, great. So I'll just like to open up now to